After the last trailer for Tears of the Kingdom, I saw an odd number of people talking about how they expected that trailer to be the one that really blows the doors wide open. And while I was definitely hoping for it, even stating some of my own hopes in my own video, but looking back, I think I knew that was pretty unrealistic. I was just happy to actually get another trailer for the game. Now that it's actually set in though, I think it's time that we start talking about how the next trailer for Tears of the Kingdom kinda needs to be a huge one. Because while there are a whole bunch of us just happy to be playing a new Zelda game, there are definitely some people who are pessimistic because Tears of the Kingdom doesn't seem to be changing up too much from Breath of the Wild. And that's even a fear I think some of us optimists have when talking about the game. So we straight up just need something new and cool next time. And of course, I have a guest today, Mr. Snack and Drink himself. Welcome on, dude. Hey folks, how are we all today? I'm super excited to get into this. So a big thank you for having me on and welcoming me to the channel once again. Let's do this. Oh, and make sure you've got your snack or drink. There is a partner video to go out with this one on Hyrule Gamers channel 2 in the description for when this video is done, so check that out. So as I usually do in my videos, let's circle around a point and talk about Breath of the Wild's marketing first. I'm going to say something that almost feels like Zelda Tube Suicide, but I wasn't a giant fan of the Zelda series when Breath of the Wild came out. I'd played most of the games before, but I wasn't into the deeper lore or anything like that. When Breath of the Wild released, I was as casual of a gamer as you could get. I bought the game because my mum sent me the trailer and it looked like an open world game, and would you know, hey, look at that. I like open world games, let me get the new Zelda game. I then got it on the Wii U and played it for a few hours, but not that long, and wouldn't pick it up again until I got my Switch and went to Venice a few months later, and had literally nothing to play. What I'm telling you is that I have literally zero emotional attachment to the trailers for Breath of the Wild, literally none at all. And until a couple of years ago, if someone had told me that the trailers for the game were amazing, some even saying they are perfect, I would have shrugged it off and just assumed that you liked the game a whole lot, but not the actual trailers themselves. But looking back with literally no attachment, I can say that the trailers for Breath of the Wild were near perfection. The first teasing the actual open world itself, and revealing this new spider-like robot enemy, giving people just a little taste. Enough to actually keep everyone on the edge of their seats for when the game would next show at an event. That wouldn't be for quite a while though until some gameplay at the Game Awards 2014, and then it'd also get delayed in the process after that. Sounding all a little bit too familiar. It would show in E3 2016 though, and would give us a massive look at the world and a little more into the story. Even more of the same happened at the Game Awards in 2016, before a more story-oriented trailer in January of 2017, right before release. The 2016 trailers showed us some glimpses into the world itself, while the final trailer gave us a great big look at what we'll actually be doing in that world. It was a fantastic way to market the game. It was so good it matched the same quality as the game itself, and you guys know how I feel about that. Looking back on the period when Breath of the Wild was yet to be released, and the game was dropping trailers to promote and hype up the release, there are a few key points that made all of these trailers fantastic and memorable. Not the only, but the main point I'd like to bring up is the amount of scale every single trailer show does. Not just in terms of world map size, but also the scale of the enemies, storyline, and quite literally everything about the game. The Tears of the Kingdom trailers have been really cool and in some ways mind-blowing, but they haven't shown the same degree of scale. I mean yeah, we have seen islands in the sky and that is a huge new feature for the game, but it does still go off the existing Hyrule, and to a degree, the amount of Sky Island seen so far does still give extension to the first game vibes. In my opinion, it hasn't had its own massive scale showing off yet, and that is exactly what the next Tears of the Kingdom trailer has to include for me. Quite literally, it needs to be huge. In scale. I think the trailers so far have gotten the general hype and excitement well done, but showing off the true scale of the game is still to come in my opinion. Now I won't go too much into exactly what I'd like to see in the next trailer just yet, as we'll be getting into that later in the video, but generally speaking, we haven't really seen many enemies or large scale battles. The Breath of the Wild trailers had a good few awesome shots of the new enemies we were due to face both in epic settings like Death Mountain with fire-breathing Lizalfos, Hinox towering above Link, or even that super old teaser where Link takes on the terrifying Guardian. As for the scale of the story, we had the trailer Life in the Ruins, that was solely story focused and even had Impa narrating it. This really teased the story well without revealing too much, but still showing us how deep a story we were in for. We've yet to get that sort of scale for Tears of the Kingdom. We've had little glimpses such as the cave paintings in the first trailer and the carvings in the most recent third trailer, but nothing showing us the depth of our next adventure. As for the world itself, 
I do feel that the next trailer should also give us a better image of the scale of this new explorable world. We know Hyrule from Breath of the Wild will be a part of it to a degree, but the new stuff, that needs to be shown in depth next time and not just teased in certain areas. The true scale being the entire sky island slash world to explore, as well as the underground's depths and anywhere else that we'll be exploring. This is the biggest thing generally speaking for me that the next trailer must include. Going off of the trailers that made Breath of the Wild's build up so special and memorable. Now the problem is that Tears of the Kingdom hasn't really had all of that much to this point. The beefiest trailer in terms of reveals that we've been given so far was in the form of the E3 2021 trailer. We were shown the inclusion of the Sky Island for the first time and we also got a look at a far different tone than what we were expecting. I think before 2021 most people were expecting the game to be taking a much darker approach in terms of marketing, showing us more caves and other locations that are underground, and while I definitely don't think we won't get that stuff, I think it's important to the Zelda team that the game does look approachable for pretty much anyone. And having the marketing be as dark as the first look trailer was all the way through could have deterred some of that audience, though that is a pretty speculative claim so I'll shut up now. As I kind of touched on on the start of the video, there are a whole bunch of people who really don't know whether Tears of the Kingdom is going to change much over the last game. When you've done one open world, is there really enough there that you can like reuse the same open world but just add some elements to it? Well I think having those sorts of opinions clouding the marketing of your game is pretty bad. It's a great thing to have questions, but when some of those questions are actively questioning the reasons for the game in the first place, that isn't good. Everyone who's thinking that way needs a reason to not think that way, because even I'm having that trouble sometimes. Apart from the Sky Islands, how will Tears of the Kingdom innovate? And that is why the next trailer has to be huge. It has to show us what this game is really about and what we've been missing through the trailers so far. So let's talk about some stuff that we'd like to see in the next trailer if we're being optimistic. Now, what would I like to see exactly in the next trailer? Three main things that come to mind are dungeons, caves, and more sky islands. These three things could make the next trailer colossal and memorable. Oh, and a sort of bonus slash second section after the main part of the trailer, Ganondorf. Firstly, the first three mentioned things. For dungeons, that is because so many fans are hoping, and to a degree expecting, Zelda dungeons to be present in this game. And we haven't had any solid looks at what we can confirm to be dungeons. There have been a few speculations, such as this tower on one of the islands, but we can't confirm that's what it is, as well as other shots like the flamethrower shield clip. None of this is solid enough. In the next trailer, I would like to see the dungeons of the game explicitly teased and made clear that they are dungeons. An epic castle in the sky, a deep dark underworld lair, in the depths of Death Mountain and whatever else is in store. As for caves, this applies to both situations of the caves only being for finding Ganondorf and also the caves being an entire underworld below Hyrule. Show us more of that, that is what kicked off the hype for this game, give us a deeper pun intended, look at these dark caves beneath Hyrule, really sell them to us. And of course, show us more sky islands. This kind of links back to an earlier point of mine regarding there not being an entire sky world so to say being shown as of yet, and it's still feeling like an extension to Hyrule. Show us the full extent of what's up here, assuming that there is a whole new world up here of course. Give us some epic shots of Link really going around these islands, traversal, combat, interaction, give us a bit of everything. Then after all of that is done, the trailer fades to black, we think it's done, but suddenly some sinister music begins playing and building up, red fog and malice cloud the screen and Ganondorf bursts up, rising from his resting place and an extra minute of the trailer plays, all focused on Ganondorf. Some backstory as to how he got here, a few teases of him rising but from different angles and of course a look from all perspectives of that moment where his eyes open, as well as some generic evil bad boy shots of him doing his thing. That would be so insanely cool to see. As some of you viewers who regularly come to the channel will probably be able to guess, I agree with Hyrule Gamer wholeheartedly on this one. Especially in terms of caves, the thought of caves in a Zelda game are a huge amount of fun. Some people think that the caves in Twilight Princess weren't the greatest, but in my opinion they were amazing and having caves in Tears of the Kingdom be like they were in that game would fit the feeling a lot. Of course we know that shrines themselves will be gone in the next game which leaves a massive massive hole for them. A lot of people will be asking the question of what will replace them, I think caves will, and I wouldn't be surprised if we're shown the inside of one with a little reward at the end in the next trailer to get us hyped on new kinds of shrines with some new puzzles, and for the love of all that is holy, 
some new theming. As much as I love the shrines themselves, I am done with the tech theming. Even though it's been done even more, I would take a fire theme over that theme again literally any day. I also just really want to see the inside of a dungeon. Gameplay wise, I don't really mind how it feels, I just want to see them. If they can get the theming on par with the puzzle set up in the Divine Beast and give us something truly unique there, then I will be genuinely over the moon. Another thing is that I'd love to see a boss. Of course, don't spoil a ton of the bosses for us. Heck, if they'd have done that with Breath of the Wild, they would have spoiled the designs of every single boss, but I'd love to see just one brand new boss at the very end of a dungeon with a cool and unique arena. Just show the hero shooting some arrows at a giant boss with the same sort of stature as something like Morpheal in the Lakebed Temple. Just give us some insane looking shots to get us really invested in the game. A random example, but recently a God of War trailer ended with Kratos and Thor duking it out. I want that scale of epicness, but on a much less personal basis. Finally, I want some story bits. Don't fill the entire thing to the brim with story until the final trailer, but grabbing my attention by giving me the general plot, or at least a facade of what the general plot is, would just be a ton of fun in my opinion, and would fuel the theories that plague the community. But what are our realistic hopes for the next trailer if we're being utterly and completely honest with ourselves? Now, generally speaking, what I'd hope the next trailer does as a whole is to hype up the game even more, to an insane level of hype. No little cute teases of bits and pieces, full blown shots of everything that's gonna make this game iconic, even if that comes at the cost of spoiling some parts ever so slightly. This game will be big no doubt, but give us a big look at the game in this next trailer and really show off the big new features of this game. The sky islands, underground, hopefully dungeons, and of course, our evil lord, Ganondorf. I want the game to keep going bigger. At the minute, there are a lot of people that are hyped for the newest title in the series because of course they are, but the biggest hook they have is the Sky Islands. I think a lot of people are like me where they genuinely think seeing even a little section of a traditional dungeon would hype people up to an incalculable degree. Seeing a section of a dungeon and maybe a boss fight would get me so hyped up to no end and I'm hoping we get some stuff like that. Just a load of stuff that is raw for a Zelda game. That would be exciting and I'm so ready for it. We might only be a few weeks away from a new trailer now with the Game Awards, but that is a discussion for another day. Hello again folks, thank you very much for watching this video, and also a big big thanks to Triforce Trends for having me on his channel again. It's been a ton of fun working together on another video. I hope to see you all again and wish you a wonderful rest of your day or night. Oh, and check out my video afterwards. Until the next time, I've been... Hyrule Gamer. Please don't forget to go and check out the great video we just uploaded over on Mr. Snack and Drinks channel too. I hope you enjoyed it and the link will be in the comments and the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed then please do support the channel by leaving a like rating and subscribing. You'll get news as quick as possible for Tears of the Kingdom and you'll join the 25% of people who are subscribed so thank you a ton if you do. The people you can see on screen right now are my Patreon supporters and thank you all so much for the support. Some Drew and Jared Whedon are especially amazing for being my top paying patrons as usual. I cannot express how happy I am. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank Thank you. They have the Triforce colored names in that Triforce font as usual. If you'd like to join them, then you can do for as little as £1 or $1.58 a month. The links to my Patreon and to the social platforms are in the description. Plus, I recently made a membership in which you can become heroes on the channel. Just press that join button if you want to join, and thank you to those who already are. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on Sunday and on Tuesday and Wednesday on Twitter for even more team reveals for Triforce Trivia.